Hello guys, here in my hand I have the 319 36 UTVN. For the longest time, this light was the pop can king. Basically, it's the brightest pop can size light uh, at around 12,000 lumen. Um, not anymore. Now we have the Olight X7VN. The reason that this light is brighter than the older TN36 UTVN now is because I'm able to fit driver VNX2 uh, into this light. So the circuit actually pushed the LEDs as hard as the batteries can give. Um, since we're talking lumen here, let's just talk numbers, get it out of the way so we can talk about other things. So this light will come in two configuration, a shave dome configurations and a dome on configurations. The shave dome, uh, all these numbers will be ANSI, all right? Although I do have max turn on output numbers on my store, but on Skylumen, but uh, I'm just gonna name the, uh, the ANSI numbers. So the shave dome version puts out 13,500 lumen. So about 1,500 lumen brighter than the TN36 UT. Uh, the dome on version puts out 14,500 lumen. So that is quite substantial. And uh, the dome on puts out 70k lux. And the shave dome puts out 100k lux. So basically, for the X7VN, you lose about, with the shave dome, you lose about 1,000 lumen, but you gain 30% in beam intensity. That seems quite substantial in beam intensity wise, which is a thousand lumen loss, but, and, and I, I'm, a, I'm a thrower fan, you guys know that. However, um, uh, for this particular light, just this particular light, I am more interested in, in the, the quality of the beam, the tint, the sp spill the width beam. So, I know it was a hard decision. But a lot of customers come to me and they're like, Dome on and Shave Dome, which one do I pick? And, and for this particular light, I'm going to have to go with Dome on. Just because it has more output, it, uh, the tint is really, really nice, it has a little bit larger hotspot, and, and, and who are you going to fool? It's, it's, a, it's more or less a flutter. Yes, 70,000 K Lux is not, and 70 versus 1,000 K Lux is actually a pretty decent thrower uh, back in the days. But who are you going to fool? This is a mass flutter. It just happens to throw decently well because of the sheer mass amount of output coming out of it. But so for this light, right off the bat, I'm going to recommend the Dome On for the extra output, the really nice pure white tint, and a little bit lack of throw is not a big deal in my opinion in this light. If you want a thrower, I will have a different pop can thrower coming soon, all right? But for this light, for the purpose of it, to retain as solidified as king uh, status as the pop can king, Dome On is the way I'll recommend it. All right, so that's that. Let's unbox and take a look. Yep, let's do that. Okay. close this thing. It's extremely sharp. I don't want to cut myself later. By the way, you can buy that knife on my store. Okay. All right. So what's in the box? Uh, the light itself, obviously. Pretty nice, very nice presentable case. This would be a very nice gift box. All right. Uh, then there's an accessory box. Let's pull that out. I actually modded the light, but I've never actually take a peek to see what's in the accessory box. I never really care what's in the accessory box. Uh, oh, there's a holster. Nice. All right. Bunch of manual. Which, whoa. Okay. I'll like give you one of these um, stickers. They they look like they are reflective. I'm not sure if they are, but that's pretty cool. If you're an Olight fan, there you go. Um, there's a manual, which you're going to toss because all of my versions will have Dryer VNX2. At first, I was going to, I was, I was debating because the factory user interface is pretty good, and I was debating whether to retain the factory user interface, just do a power boost. But you know what? You're gonna go. We're here. Let's go all out. Dryer VNX is the way to go. Okay. I really like coasters that uh, does not allow that has the non pass through, so that it will fully protect the light. This one does seem lighter and thinner than typical poster, 
but it's very nice, well-built quality. And it's a perfect fit, perfect. Carabiner loop, and again, oh, actually this one doesn't have the, the fix, this one only have the Velcro over bell loop. Holds substantially well. I really don't think it's gonna fall out of your belt. But um, with the other holster, you have a Velcro over belt, and then you have a, but you can go actually go beneath this uh, slap here and you can have it fixed so it'll stay on more rigidly on your belt. So this one only have the Velcro over. But the Velcro seems to be quite substantial. So I think it should hold on pretty well too. And I must say, this, this holster does feel thinner than normal holster, right? Still very good quality, just very thin. I like it. Okay, gets the job done. Pretty decent holster. I'm glad they included that. Alright, the light itself. Mask to protect the lens. Get rid of that. Bring back in the through night TN36 UTVN. So, the TN36 UTVN is kind of uh, a little bit taller, okay? The head of the uh, X7VN here is a tiny bit larger, okay? Well, actually, this is not really a T6, uh, TN36 UTVN, all right? This is another light I'll introduce later, but basically it has the same body size as a TN36 UTVN. So if we're not looking at the LEDs, let's just pretend this is a TN36 UT, okay? Uh, head size. Yep. TN36 UT is a little bit smaller. It feels a little lighter and on my scale, I think it was like nine ounce versus 10 ounce. The, the, uh, the old light was like an ounce more, if I recall correctly. Everything else is very nice about both light. Right? So size wise, they're relatively close, except for the X7VN has a little bit larger head. And you can see here the reflector wells are a little larger and therefore um, it should throw a tiny bit more. One thing to note though, I do notice that the X7VN reflector has a tiny bit smoother finished than the, uh, than the quite heavily orange peeled or textured uh, finished uh, reflector on the TN36 UTVN. And I think that is going to, um, that's gonna definitely helps out with throw with the smoother finished and the larger reflector wells. Okay, so that's that. Let's put these two away and let's take a look at our two modded models here. Uh, one cool feature that you can add in with this light is uh, if it comes with a blue finished uh, stainless steel bezel. However, under heat treatment, um, it turns into a rainbow color, which I think was pretty, I thought it was pretty cool, right? That it turns into this nice purple color. And now that I, ha I got the hang of it, I think I can squeeze out the purple even more. If you're into that, the blue itself is really nice and elegant, all right? So, um, but however, if you would like a little bit extra touch of custom touch, I think it's a $12 option where you can opt this in on the store. Uh, on the right here, I have the shaved dome version. On the left here, I have the dome on version. And as I've said, I recommend the dome on version. Although the shaved dome does have 30% more beam intensity at 1,000 lumen lost. Drive the NX2, we're too used to that. I've made a ton of video, so, um, I'll have a link to Drive VNX2 so you know exactly what the user interface is like, but you should be quite similar, familiar with it by now, otherwise I'll link the video. I really like the switch design here, how there is, um, how it's soft and it's kind of recessed and there's a, a ridge on both sides that kind of, uh, you can't really accidentally, uh, nothing can really accidentally tap on the button for, to activate it. You really have to intentionally push on the button, right? Otherwise, it's just, it's, yeah, it's, it's much harder to accidentally activate, uh, ac accidentally activate the button. There's one thing that I don't like about this light. You can't have it in, you can't, you can't lock out this light. So right now, I'm going to put the light in the lowest mode. And if you, if you loosen the tail cap, the light will eventually turn off. But, so from the point, let's, let's see how much we have left from the point of, um, of lockout so so there we go now it's lockout let's see how much more we have left 
that's half a turn. That's one turn, one and a half. Well, actually, there's still a lot of uh, of of of, spa of room left. So yeah, technically, you can still loosen the tail cap to turn off the light. But it's not as easy as a slightly loosen. It's like more like a turn and a half to get it loosened. And there's still a lot of substantial. I was um, pleasantly surprised that there's a quite a bit amount of thread left. So you can actually loosen it halfway, have the light lock out, and the light won't turn on and the cap still stays on. So okay, so in a way, there's some mechanical lockout. What else do I have to say? It throws amazing and it's really really bright. So. Uh, yes, it's currently my, oh, yeah, one thing. If I'm not mistaken, this light is quite expensive. Let me look, oh, darn it, my freaking tablet. So, uh, if I remember correctly, the TN36 UTVN is a little, it performs a little less, but it costs like 267 And the X7DN costs around $350, if I'm not mistaken. So it's like, I remember it was like $70, $75 more. So is that worth it to you? Is it worth it to you for uh, less, about a couple thousand more lumen and uh, about $70 more? Which one has better build quality? <sighs> I don't know. I think they're both equally good, but the Olight may be a little bit better. A little bit, okay? But then the TN36 UTVN has a very attractive size and it's cheaper and $70 is a lot of money. But one thing though, if you if, if you are a Jarvie NX2 fan, then you just have to have the X7VN because the user interface is, is very easy to use, it's very quick. There's different modes that you can set to and you get more throw, you get more output. So, in my opinion, Personally, I would go with the uh, Olight X7VN if I have to pick between the two. Now, one other thing that I would like to add is the TN36 UTVN has four batteries running in series, and you have to watch for batteries, you uh, matching batteries voltage more carefully than you would have in a uh, in the Olight because the Olight has a 2S2P. So basically, two, two batteries are in series, and then two are in parallel. Parallel configurations are very safe. So two cells in series is uh, safer than four cells in series. So in that kind of sense, uh, both light will require unprotected hydrains, but the Olight battery configurations is a little bit safer, right? Uh, comparing the two, aside if, if price was not an issue, I would, I would definitely go for the X7BN. But, but it's, there's a big price gap that I think there's still room for both light to be uh, on the market. I'm keeping both on my store. And I'm still recommending the TN36 UTVN for people on a budget or for people, for people that... Uh, uh, oh, here's the thing. Since this thing's only one ounce more and you're pushing a lot harder here, yes, the TN36 UTVN uh, will get a little less hot than the X7VN. The X7VN will get very hot very fast, although it weighs a little more, but you're pushing the LEDs to the maximum limit. So, the TN36 UTVN is very hot, the X7VN is incredibly hot on turbo, right? But then you have uh, a bunch of different levels with driver NX2 to tame the heat. But I'm just saying that, uh, yes, there's a price to pay for the output that you get. That's what we get for pushing the boundaries. That'll be all. I'm going to have an outdoor video where I'll compare the uh, X7VN with the TN36 UTVN. And then you can view that and see side by side. And, and it will be very clear that the um, X7VN is clearly uh, outperforms the TN36 UTVN. I hope I'm not missing anything. I'd rather make a video too long, but not miss anything. All right. Thank you. If you have any questions, let me know. Send me an email. Email is always the best way to get to me, and I will answer your question. So here we go. The current Hopcam King X7VN. Thank you.